happens after you die? What might it feel like? What sorts of emotions might you experience? Lost Spirit explores just that. It's an experiential-based virtual reality game where you're transported into the spirit world. You find yourself in a sort of limbo between death and reaching the afterlife, whatever that may be. Using your whole body, you can naturally float and glide around the environment while experiencing something you might not have thought otherwise possible. This game was designed by myself and another student at Simon Fraser University in conjunction with the Center for Digital Media. And we wanted to create this game or experience that explores embodiment, and I mean using your body. In this game, you'll experience four different worlds. Using the Oculus Rift and Microsoft Connect, you can use your body to move around and float around the environment like a spirit might. About, about this game. There are four different worlds. You start off in this forest world, which you can see here. And it creates a sense of kind of wonder, like what am I doing here? What's happening? Sort of curiosity. We let you explore the environment and finding these little particles which when you collide with them, you find out are memories of your past life. And you sort of replay these memories uh, in your mind. Once you've collected them all, you find this really big, large tree. And by colliding with the tree, you can give up these memories, sort of signifying that you're letting go of your past life. In the next environment, find yourself in a canyon. And as you search, you can hear these voices, but you can't really see where they are. And finally, you find another spirit. You're not alone in the journey towards the afterlife, after all. And together, you can find other lost spirits, too, and continue on to the afterlife. The next one, environment, you find yourself face to face with your greatest fears. These huge, deathly, scary looking demons. Sort of like Sauron in Mordor. Looking down at you. And you have to make your way past them. They're shooting laser beams at you. And it's really frightening. But together with the other lost spirits, you can combat these demons. You face your fears sort of signifying this fear of death and that it's really frightening and scary and getting over that. And finally, at the very end of this experience, you have the short time where you're going across the ocean into the clouds. You get to fly around, sort of enjoying that you've made it and finally accepting death. Our motivation and inspiration comes from a lot of different sources. We wanted to have a unique experience, so something that we haven't really seen before. We wanted to use uh, your body to explore, and we also wanted storytelling to make it engaging. Uh, Journey, uh, from that game company, is an experiential game, if you've ever played it, uh, where you're uh, this person and you're not really given any instructions, and you wander around this environment and kind of journeying up to this mountain you can see in the background. So we took that kind of storytelling and experience into our game. On the more researchy side, there's wings and flying in immersive VR. 
and this is by Six Stroke, where they had a flying experience using wings. Um, I got to try out Birdly at SIGGRAPH a couple of years ago in Vancouver, uh, where you have the Oculus Rift on and then you get to control this mechanical machine by flapping and tilting to be a bird in the city. And this is the King or Connect Bing, where you use the Connect to control a paper airplane. As well as uh, we're working with chronic pain patients, and we wanted to have this kind of experience in using VR to uh, help people uh, feel different things, emotions, experience things that they are maybe afraid of. And in our design, we tried to make it really simple and low cost so that anybody could try it out. You know, the, the Birdly simulation uh, is pretty costly or some sort of other big rig might be too much. We wanted it to be hands-free and really interactive. Um, but the big part of this came from playtesting a lot. So first, we wanted to really nail down the movement of a spirit. So that's really different than, say, a bird or an airplane or a butterfly or a dragon, anything that you've seen, lots of flying in bird gates. A ghost or a spirit, on the other hand, is very airy, angelic, very floaty. So we wanted to create that very specific experience. So in the first play testing, we didn't tell participants anything, and we just let them experience it. So they're making a lot of bird flapping movements, because when you think flying game, you think bird. And we found that they raise their arms a lot. Here's another person. For this initial prototype, our movements were just move your hands up, and then you would go up raise your hands down and move down and that we found that was very discreet and static and didn't give us the lovely feeling we wanted. So back to the Drawingberg board and playtesting part two. We wanted uh, some more natural movements, some acceleration, deceleration, and now we tried it with the Oculus. Tested out three different kinds of rotations. We found that was the hardest one to do. You now going up and down seems intuitive. And then we also did leaning, so forwards and leaning backwards really slightly. But the rotation is kind of weird because the connect is a 360. You need to always be facing it. You can't go like this or it gets messed up. So we tried out rotating with your shoulders. So if you wanted to move uh, to the right, you would rotate your shoulders like that, to the left. There was airplane mode, so you can bang left and right. And then the twist, where you could go like this or like this, and rotate left and right. Here's one of our play testers. We found that the movement was a lot more natural and smooth, um, but there was issues with people getting tired, and the head movement and the body rotation, it was hard to tell how much you rotated, because you're moving the head on the display around, but you're also moving your body, and they can be inconsistent. Things were a lot different than just like a big projector screen. And the speed was way too 
fast now or too slow. So in testing part three, after we tested all three of those rotations and we asked participants what they thought of them, unanimously they liked the airplane mode. I think because as you're a kid you kind of like go like this and you fly around, it's really familiar, so people really like doing that. Rather than the twist. This is our final one, and this guy's really into it, he almost fell over. Uh, but a lot more smoother control. Uh, you can go as fast as you want, or as slow as you want. So if you lean farther forward, the faster you go. So the flying and the floating movement was really key in this experience. And after a lot of playtesting and asking participants what they thought, we finally honed in on that. Um, some takeaways from this. Designing for a specific experience. Uh, so we wanted a very specific story and floating movement, like a spirit, and there were some hardware limitations for what we could do. Um, but we think we could try some other things, perhaps, uh, instead of being effortful, like leaning forwards, we could maybe step forwards or forwards. You could also make it more, we made it more subtle, so you could only raise your arms a little bit, or, and then stay at that height. Designing for VR is not what you'd expect, so I find, and you have all probably experienced, if you think it's going to work in VR, it's probably not, and so I want to design better VR experiences that take advantage of the 3D environment and, and the fact that it's, it's three-dimensional and it's not just porting a desktop game or mobile game into VR, which doesn't work. Trust is a must, and if your users or players don't trust the system, that they're going to feel safe. Or like if in this one they thought they might fall over, then they won't suspend their disbelief for the experience. So getting them to really buy into this is okay, the movements that you do is not going to make you fall over is really key. Embodiment is cool, but is it worth the effort? So a lot of people found it was really natural experience and that, you know, they felt that it was a lot more interactive to do that and if they were more engaged in this experience but they still complained like oh well I'd rather just sit down and use a joystick so how can we get over that so in conclusion uh, Lost Spirit is a game where you can explore what it might be like to be a spirit in the afterlife you can use your bodies to around and go through this story and explore the different emotions associated with death. Thank you. Yes. I have a question and then depending on your answer a follow-up question. Um, this is a cool project did you get to present this to the public, or was this mostly sort of internally uh, tried with your with your peers? This is internally. And I think what I found really interesting was the overlap with uh, movement exercises for older people, where something like this could really be helpful to get perhaps people with mobility issues mm -hmm. or our aging population engaged in some sort of physical movement. So my question would then be the kind of research that you're doing with uh, users
user response and user interaction? How 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 does someone that's an older person perceive it, and is it is it meaningful? Does it does it um, create nausea or other problems because of the type of immersive learning experience? So that, that was more of a comment than a question for you. Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks. Um, I know that we're doing a collaboration between labs, and my lab is more on the perception and cognition side, but um, Shin and uh, Diane are more on the medical side, so they could definitely work with, they work with chronic pain patients, so that could also, because they have mobility um, constraints as well, it would be interesting to see, you know, do they experience motion? So far, our participants are fine, but yeah, you never know a more vulnerable population. Uh, I want to ask about your the perception of trust issue. Can you say a little more about what, what do you think are the biggest challenges, or what, what affected the, your participants' uh, sense of trust or unwillingness to suspend, suspend disbelief? What were, the, what were the problem areas? The problem area is I think we're the leaning the most. So if you're leaning forwards, that's okay, but still it's like, yeah, but especially leaning back. So how can you incorporate backwards movement in a natural way? You could step forwards and backwards, but still it's like having a blindfold on essentially. So did you get the sense that people are afraid they were gonna fall over or having trouble judging their real world limits? Yeah, not necessarily that they would fall over, but judging their real world limits. And you don't know like what's around you, even though it could be a clear space. In your mind, you don't know. Yeah. So there's this, uh, what you're describing is, uh, it's called human joystick. Um, <laughs> so you could actually show them in the virtual environment the circle that they are limited to, and that way they know, okay, I can walk this far forward, I can walk this far back, and then as far forward as they walk, is how fast they My question was, uh, it, it looks sort of like it was discrete, but that is the, either they were turning or they weren't turning. Was it, uh, how analog was it? Did you sort of halfway turn-ish, or was it, you had to be completely up and down to turn? In the beginning uh, prototypes, it was discrete, and we found that was didn't feel very good. So then we had it so that you could raise your arms a little bit and you gradually start going up higher, or you could turn a little bit, and that made, it also, feels a little better. Also, you describe so you start off. You describe this is sort of definitively. This is how we see spirits. This is the the after. I, I, it's one interpretation. Right, exactly. So, um, did you look at different cultural or religious interpretations or um, theories on the afterlife and consider maybe doing some other different versions of it to suit other cultures? Hmm. Yeah, I looked at other cultures. I wanted to create something that was more cultural neutral. So, you know, this. It's like there's something after death, but <coughs> it's more around like accepting it and not being afraid. I'm wondering how this can help people process grief and how embodiment is related to that. Because I'm so when I was watching it, I have experience with close people passing away and for me it kind of like triggered things when you were explaining the experience and I wonder if being immersed in that would make it even more powerful than not and so I guess there's two questions one is have you had people that have said anything about that kind of like processing grief through your experience and the second one if you have any ideas of the relationship between that and embodiment So far, we're only focusing on the movement, and 
the story and the experience we haven't quite got to. Um, and speaking to embodiment and processing that, I think that you're right and that it could be really powerful because you're experiencing it yourself and you're using your body. And if you're opening yourself up like that and, and raising your arms up, that could trigger some things. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, let's thank Alex.